Okay. Good morning, everybody. Morning. Hi. Good morning. I'm multitasking, so that's why I, I won't be on camera, but I'm here listening. I have my ear pods in, but I'm okay. just going to sign off. So I want to say good morning anyway. <laughs> awesome. How many people are here? Oh, a few. Good morning, Joanna. Good Look morning. Long time no see. <laughs> I'm a little <sighs> rough this morning, so you'll have to bear with me. Well, I too did not sleep so well last night, and I saw that you were online quite late. <laughs> did you still have your guests? Uh, yeah, they left at a quarter to 12, and I I got a little tipsy last night. So, <laughs> What? <laughs> How could that happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you know. Okay, yeah. Joanna. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to start the live stream. As soon as we're live, you can go ahead, okay? Okay. You want me to signal you or I'll just say we're live? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yet. All right. Looks like we are now live on Facebook. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joanna Weiser, and I am here to present my absolute favorite topic to you, which is sleep, stress, and emotions, or stress, sleep, and emotions, or emotions, sleep, and stress. I think it doesn't really matter because we can never separate these three. Like, I don't know, you can't have a which came first, the chicken or the egg. One seems to beget the other. And so we will try to tackle all three an hour or less and you're going to see me reading from my old school notebook because I needed to make notes. I could talk for hours on this topic and I promise you I won't. <laughs> I respect your time and mine and we'll try to keep it tight but there's so much we could say in past um, teachings on this topic I've sometimes brought out this array of essential oils and walked through suggestions which is great but really overwhelming and the fact is every one of our 100 plus essential oils has properties that support you on a physical and emotional and even potentially on a spiritual level so really there's no wrong answer when it comes to oils you need to choose what works for you okay but you might be surprised to find that my starting point is really going to be gut health and looking at digestive health as there's really no way that you can feel emotionally strong, mentally clear, and, and really have a, a good uh, set of coping mechanisms and great res response to stress if your gut is unhappy, if it's not working well. So I have some notes here and you will see me reading from them. Uh, throughout. Um, some links between gut health and your immune health, your mood and mental health, which I just said, um, but even autoimmune endocrine issues. So think hormones. If you are struggling with weight control, uh, look no further than your gut, right? And it can even manifest as skin conditions. So you may or may not be aware that 90% of the serotonin, which is directly involved in your mood and emotions, are actually rooted in your gut and really ditto for your immune system. So 70% of your immune health starts in your gut. And so we'll talk about the gut microbiome. I am no scientist. We're not going to get into big crazy words, but your, your microbiome refers to the three to 500 different species of good gut bacteria that run throughout your digestive tract but are primarily in your intestines. And the more broad and robust the variety, the better health and wellness your body, mind, and soul will enjoy. More specifically, so issues ranging from weight control to mental focus, degenerative diseases to how well you sleep at night will be very much rooted in uh, your health in your gut. Genetics plays a role in the, the, the broadness and depth of that bacteria, but what you eat, how well you 
digest your food and how you supplement. And that's our foundational wellness, right? We talk about this class, how you build and maintain that foundation will determine how well your gut functions and ultimately your immune health, but your mental wellness as well. So in our basics classes, we talk always about how, you know, when you take antibiotics or prescription pharmaceuticals, um, that it can wreak havoc on your good gut bacteria. And then we talk about probiotics, namely doTERRA's PB Assist. Um, this is something that I use mostly daily. I don't use it every single day of the year, but I use it quite regularly. You always need to rebuild and repopulate when there are prescription pharmaceuticals involved. But frankly, I think the same is true when you think about the quality of food that we're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, so for me, I lifelong vitality, non-negotiable, digestive enzymes, probiotic, and hopefully, you know, you are having, enjoying a more or less healthy whole foods based diet. Okay, that's, you know, our lofty ambition. We can all aspire to that. We're all real human beings. And I, I like to think I eat fairly well, but the fact is, you know, not every day is a perfect day, but the average North American, 70% of their diet is comprised of refined, processed, fast foods, junk foods, sugar, 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 salt, <laughs> and lots of fats. And this kind of way of eating, very refined, does not support complex carbohydrates, healthy fats, and lots, lots of fresh produce. And so if your diet isn't perfect, that's ever more reason to consider supplementation. A lifelong vitality with its whole foods base of produce, micronutrients, macronutrients, essential oils, uh, is, you know, essential fatty acids, omegas, and cellular energy, among them adaptogens. I and mean, these are just, this is an incredible all-in system. Okay, I'm not going to talk endlessly about it, but I, I really think that we're remiss when we don't acknowledge the role in our stress response, how we cope, and certainly the quality of sleep we're getting every night. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it there. I think we should talk, we should just roll right into sleep. So I have to ask you, how many of you can solidly claim you get between seven and nine hours of sleep a night? <laughs> I'm laughing because most people are going to, to kind of ruefully eyeball me, give me the stink eye and say, are you joking? But that's really what you need in order to rest and repair. I mean, do you get six? Five? Less? Hopefully not less. Thomas Dacker stated that sleep is the golden chain that ties health and our bodies together. Think about that. If you're shortchanging yourself two or more hours a night, that's 14 hours a week, 60 hours a month. Do the math, it's 720 hours every single year. And what the fallout for you will be fatigue right? Um, think about fatigue. It leads to really poor choices during the day. If you haven't slept well at night, you're probably going to caffeinate. You'll be looking to stimulants and sugar to help you through the highs and lows of energy throughout the day. Um, there might be crashes. You know what happens when you eat a, a really high sugar, low nutrient density diet, um, you know, brain fog. A lot of our car accidents come from people who are chronically sleep deprived. Okay, so <laughs> fatigue leads to poor choices for sure. Okay, I'm just gonna flip my page here. Sorry, I should have done that in advance. All right, so when you're run down, what happens? Immune suppression. Now you're leaving yourself open to the bug of the moment, right? So just Try to maintain emotional balance, particularly during times of substantial stress, like right now, uh, immune threats, etc. So if your diet is poor, your sleep hygiene needs improvement, and you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders every single day, based on how you feel today, or most days, where will your health and wellness be five years from now, if nothing changes? Now, this is not doom and gloom here. I'm, I'm setting the stage for us now, really just connecting the dots, um, coming up with some simple suggestions, some natural solutions and habits 
that you can begin to implement one by one. You know, Rome was not built in a day. We're not asking you to overhaul your life today, tomorrow, or even this month. But if you can start to implement small changes, I think you'll experience an overall shift because as we said in the beginning, sleep, stress, mood management, all of these are interconnected, particularly with your gut health. And then that affects everything. All right, <clears throat> let's move right along. Let's talk more details about sleep. I'm gonna give you some suggestions. These are overall suggestions and then we'll talk a little bit more specifically about oils and supplements and that type of thing. But to improve your sleep habits, um, start by creating a sleep friendly bedroom, right? And some more specifically comfortable mattress. Is your mattress not comfortable? Why are you still on it? <laughs> uh, get a good pillow, appropriate bedding. You know, you want an adequately dark room um, to support your circadian rhythms. Peace and quiet are a good thing. Maybe you don't live in a, in a peaceful neighborhood or maybe your house is noisy. So then you may have to go a little further, right? So some low music, maybe some, some white noise, something. Uh, cooler temps, most people seem to sleep better. Though if that doesn't suit you, adjust accordingly. Um, let's see what else. Essential oils. Diffusing. Absolutely diffuse essential oils, use them on your sheets, on yourself. We'll get into some more details about that momentarily. This is my tip to you, do not go to bed on a full stomach like I did last night. Uh, does not make for good sleep. <laughs> and try to eliminate or minimize caffeine, particularly later in the day. And this is a big plug for Mito2 Max. Um, I do like my caffeine. I try to have any caffeine well before noon, but by using Mito2 Max, which is just natural plant botanicals to support energy and stamina, I'm finding that I, I don't reach for sugary snacks and caffeine the way I used to in the mid afternoon. So that's that's been a real win for me. Optimize your sleep schedule. Okay, so if you don't have a fixed wake up time because you have to get up for your kids or for work or whatever it is you do during the day, uh, consider creating a fixed wake up time and ditto for, for lights out. If you're a napper, try to keep that to 20 minutes or less. Craft a pre-bedtime routine. So this is awesome. I've done some, but not all of these. And I'm definitely in the needs improvement category of crafting the bedtime routine. So lower your lights a couple of hours before bedtime, get off your devices. If you can do it 90 minutes to two hours ahead, that's great. And that includes the TV. Uh, if you can't try an hour, um, you know, do you have a night care? Uh, night care, nightly skin care ritual. This would be something, you know, or taking a, a bubble bath about an hour, 45 minutes before for bed. This is a good time if you're taking Serenity soft gels or Copaiba soft gels or both, which I sometimes do. I know many of you do, or maybe adaptive liquid capsules. This is the time of day that you choose to take them. Maybe 45 minutes or so before bedtime would be a really good time to get those going, get your diffuser going. Uh, and then, then, then you can do the other things. Brush your teeth, maybe hop into bed with some light reading. Don't read War and Peace. <laughs> Don't read the news, not right before bed. And if you need further calming, meditation would be great. Maybe I have a friend that uses binaural beats. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's uh, funky rhythms that sort of mimic your heartbeat and sleep sounds. Uh, anything that can help bring down your daytime crazy <laughs> is a good thing. Uh, and then during the day, try to get some natural light every day, even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes. So I get that, that vitamin D. And if you can't, um, there are light therapy boxes. I use one in the winter time uh, just to give myself some of that light and help the circadian rhythms continue throughout the dark days of winter. Daily exercise. If you are not even taking a walk during the day, consider as few as 15 minutes, but you know, 30, 45 minutes makes all the difference in the world. Maybe not on day one, but over time, these are incredible habits to develop for overall health and wellness, but you will sleep better at night if you're doing, if you're moving your body. Okay, so we talked about caffeine and sugar, don't eat too late. Uh, and once in bed, 
if you are still tossing, turning, and you're, you're feeling like you're not going to fall asleep within about 20 minutes, I suggest get up and leave the bedroom. Go do something in low light that's, that's low impact, that's relaxing, that can take the stress away and the anxious feelings away from sleep at night. Okay, because the worst thing in the world is to create stress around bedtime and stress in the bedroom. Your bedroom should be used for nothing more than sleep, sex, <laughs> you know, maybe drop in a few notes on a notepad to get it out of your mind. And that's it. That's it. I know some people fall asleep to the TV, but that blue light is disrupting your quality of sleep. Okay, let's talk oils, shall we? I could give you a million suggestions. You probably already know that about me. You need to do you. So whatever oils you like to use in your diffuser, prep it ahead of time. Get that thing going if you can an hour ahead of time. I like to fill mine in the morning so it's ready to go at night. Um, I'm not necessarily going to make diffuser suggestions though I'll take questions at the end. So if anybody wants any, I will. The roller just for today and I want to talk about this roller. So as much as I like what Serenity does for me, I don't love lavender. Lavender makes my very active mind more active. And I'm kind of prone to crazy dreams and lavender seems to bring out the worst in that. So Serenity, as time has gone by, has not become a favorite oil of mine. I'll use it on my feet occasionally, but I really would not prefer to have the lavender and the vanilla and the sweet Roman chamomile. It's just skewing a bit sweet for me. So I kind of deconstructed it in this roller and I haven't written down what I put in here. I will actually put it in the live stream. So don't feel like you need to scramble and take notes. But in this roller, the only flower is ylang ylang, just a few drops, marjoram, wild orange, cedar wood, which I love, vetiver, juniper berry, which is very helpful if you are prone to night terrors or nightmares, and sandalwood. I put Hawaiian sandalwood in here. I know that's a lot of oils and there's some, you know, maybe more remote ones. Leave any of those out if you don't have them. Or maybe that's something that goes on your wish list for, for this month or next month's LRP. But it smells amazing. It's kind of like Peace's kid sister because it's not really heavy on the vetiver, but it has vetiver, cedarwood, and sandalwood, which are really beautiful, earthy, resinous, very sleep inducing oils. Yummy. Okay. I will post that recipe later, I promise. Okay. So let's roll along to stress. I'm not going to spend too, too much time on stress uh, because I really think it, it's part and parcel of emotions, right? Okay. So we talked about stress causing sleep deprivation and oh, sleep deprivation over time causes disease. We all experience stress, okay? We, you can't escape stress, none of us can. Some types of stress are considered really healthy. So like working out, um, intellectually stimulating tasks, even digesting a heavy meal is a stressor, okay? There's, there's positive stress and negative stress though, right? Not everything is damaging, but our response is fairly similar, okay? Our autonomic nervous system will release cortisol and adrenaline, which are hormones that help prepare us to take action, but then also to restore balance afterward. But when we're experiencing extended periods of stress, particularly chronic stress, that's when our bodies go into this constant fight or flight mode and the elevated cortisol levels over the long term can really lead to breakdown. And this is when you, you wind up with immune and autoimmune issues, cardiac problems, insomnia, hello, <laughs> anxiousness, weight gain, or even loss. And, and in some cases like cancer or worse. Okay. So I'm, it's not always just about oils. We're talking about coping mechanisms, tools for the toolkit. And one that I really started to give thoughts to is breathing and oils to support that. I'm a real shallow breather. And when I feel stressed or anxious, I tend to hold my breath 
or take very shallow breaths and it only perpetuates that tense feeling. So it's a good time to have your oils handy. Um, I'll make a few suggestions. So easy air or breathe, um, any citrus oils, eucalyptus, anything that facilitates you know, open airways or meditative oils. I love my yoga oils like a line and a rise and anchor. Black spruces are 10% off product this month. These are really, really great oils. Frankincense, any of those yummy ancient oils. Ooh, you gotta smell those. Try box breathing. Have you ever heard of that? Square breathing. So you would take a breath in for four seconds or four counts, hold for four, release for four and hold for four and continue that over and over and slowing down your breathing. Breathe in through the nose, hold. Breathe out like through the mouth, hold. Very relaxing and you will feel the tension come down. Maybe past tense is your oil, you know, or aromatouch, that's our massage blend. Pick what works for you. We have these incredible emotional oils like forgive, peace, console, whatever you need have them handy. <laughs> really, that's the secret to using your oils is to have experience, to know what you like, know what works, and then to have them in your purse, your pocket, your baby's diaper bag, your kid's backpack, or wherever it is you tend to find yourself when you're experiencing stress. Tension relieving activities, I also consider to be tools for the toolkit. So, you know, maybe you like doing puzzles, maybe you knit, or coloring therapy, <laughs> like that's a fast becoming a favorite kind of doodling exercise of mine just to, to get rid of nervous energy. Take walks, you know, maybe, maybe for you, stress relieving activity is vigorous exercise. Maybe for somebody else, it's playing with that sensory Play-Doh. Um, doTERRA.com in the blogs has a recipe for that. I highly suggest playing with that. You know, kids that like to have those fiddle toys, Try sensory Play-Doh and use your favorite oils in there. So, you know, there's a few different tools. Um, once you've done box breathing and you've mastered that, you can even work on increasing your lung capacity, really slowing it down. Try breathing in for four, holding for a count of seven, and then slowly with like a hissing breath out for eight. When you get there, you will no calm and zen. <laughs> I have a hard time actually. I almost want to cough at the end of that. And it goes to show you how, how shallow my breathing can be. Okay, so let's move into emotions, shall we? We all experience emotions just like we all experience stress every day, all day. The impact or happiness and overall well being. Our responses to our emotions can have positive or negative effects on our quality of life, depending on how we choose to respond. And that's, that's a key word, right? Choice and response. Okay, our bodies have an automatic reaction, but if you work on developing your coping mechanisms, you can override that and come up with really productive ways to manage your emotions. But if you leave them unchecked or you stuff them down, has anybody ever done that? I used to stuff my emotions down with food. I still do it from time to time. It's very problematic because if you don't deal with emotional issues that arise, you can never escape those emotions. Just keep stuffing them down, but they will come out and they can manifest in physical ailments. Think of kids that, that say, mommy, I have a stomach ache or daddy, my, you know, my tummy hurts today or I don't feel well. Sometimes it, it, it really feels physical, but it's totally emotional. Right, they will manifest in ways that'll be harmful, you know, digestive upset, inappropriate angry outbursts, or ultimately it can degrade your health. Emotions are complex multifactorial responses that are triggered by many different stimuli, very scientific, <laughs> environmental factors. So, activities, people, location. You know, when they're processed by the brain, they'll elicit a response. And your responses are going to be really personal to you and will be based on your history. You know, you, you will react based on reactions that maybe you've been experiencing your entire life, but you can change that. You can actually implement ways and habits 
that can be developed over time and you can change your response. And I think essential oils are a perfect companion to anchor that. We'll get into details on that in a moment. So I talked about positive and negative emotions and your personality style. Okay, let's move right along. Okay, so you're far more likely to use your oils as natural solutions if your muscle memory has you reaching for them, okay? Or if you already have your coping mechanisms well in place, okay? So it's a really good idea to open up your textbook or if you have an app or you've got some links to some good resources, whether it's Pinterest or whatever, um, so that you can do a little bit of advanced research. Know what oils you like, but know what works in certain situations. Because in moments of extreme emotions, if you don't have your oils handy, do you really think you're gonna open up your book while you're panicking and try to find answers to your issues? Doing it when you're reading or, you know, and just relaxed and curious will help lay the groundwork for healthy habits. So let's talk about different ways to use oils. They're such a safe and effective tool for mood management. And I, I don't think that natural solutions and the more modern medical approaches are mutually exclusive. If you're using pharmaceuticals because you need to, there's no reason you can't use your oils right alongside. And in fact, I think one can, can assist the other when, when it's necessary to be using pharmaceuticals, okay? Oils used aromatically, so particularly diffused or on a piece of diffuser jewelry, maybe you're making a spray, um, they can really shift the vibe in a room or a home quickly during times when emotions are running high. Simply diffusing can affect everyone nearby, including your pets. And I think that's really kind of awesome. So let's say you have a spouse or one of your kids is really not open to you rolling oils on them, or maybe it's not appropriate for an infant or for your pets. But if you're diffusing safely in the room, everybody is benefiting, not just you. But that is a win and they smell good. Used topically though, oils can help ground, align, calm, soothe, energize, uplift, or just even out the rough edges. I love this approach for quick action and on a more individual or personal basis. And you can even do this under clothing if you're in an environment where um, maybe aromas, scents are not allowed. I mean, I'd argue for natural aromas, but you know, different people are very sensitive to different things. Many times when I'm with my own family members, I'll just put the oils on my feet, put my socks on, put my shoes on. I get to benefit very individual and very personal, um, but internal use. Okay, this is my wheelhouse. I use a lot of my oils internally. And in fact, I'll talk a little bit about my, you know, how I start my morning every morning. I use oils internally every single day and that is how I start my day. They're a great way in the moment of crisis to take care of something very quickly because as we know, oils are transdermal, okay? They go right through your skin and they move very quickly when you put them sublingually under your tongue or on your tongue, they go right through those tissues within 20 seconds, they're already into your system and within about 20 minutes or so, they're in every cell of your body. It's a really, really fast approach. If you don't like the taste, absolutely you can put them in a veggie capsule and take them internally, but now it needs to function with whatever is in your gut. It's gonna take longer to work, longer to break down. I like the two prong approach. If I have a, you know, an issue that I want to address on an internal, on a, I can't think of that, the right word for it, but systemic, I think is the term I'm looking for, level, then I might use oils under my tongue and also in a capsule. That's a very spec specified approach. But I love the fact that just establishing this wellness routine can affect lasting changes. So when I talk internal use, I'm really thinking about it more as a daily habit. And some oils are great in the moment on a daily basis. We talk about balance that way, using balance on your feet every single day, using on guard or stronger every single day. For me, it's frankincense, copaiba, melissa, that's lemon balm, 
under the tongue and I've even added rose, I have it here. That's the big stuff, but you don't need to do that. I do that, that has really produced a profound shift when I was feeling a little bit low and I'm sticking with it because it works for me. It may not work for you, but it works for me. And I'm really, really happy with that. What else? I forgot to mention my stress roller because I made one of those too. Okay, this one's a little bit less complex. I used 13 drops of balance, 13 drops of adaptive, which is our calming blend. And then to that, since I mentioned Melissa, that's what triggered me, four drops of Melissa. And that is a super duper easy way, I call the good vibes, but to shift anxious feelings, to bring down heightened emotions, and just to call me crazy. I'm not saying I'm crazy. Okay, so the, the most profound differences for me in overall health and wellness have been lifelong vitality, digestive enzymes, probiotics, what I just said to you, frankincense, copaiba, Melissa. Every day, I have it here somewhere. Let me grab it for you. I've upcycled. It's a frankincense bottle with a dropper top on it. It is one third frankincense, one third copaiba. And then the remainder is Melissa and a few drops of rose. And I use this every single morning under my tongue. I even have a second dropper with my on guard and citrus oils and other things to make sure I get them. It doesn't taste good. But the, the difference to me far overrides a few moments of, ooh, that tastes funky. Just saying. Okay, so how do I choose when doTERRA has so many single oils and blends? I just gave you the sum total of my daily routine. After about 9 a.m., the rest of the day is open to whatever I need. So I am really reaching for oils very intuitively at this point, five and a half years in. You're not gonna feel that way on day one or maybe even in your first year, but that's, that's the beauty of things. You have nothing but time to invest in yourself. Okay, so just try things. You can't, you really can't make too many mistakes. The worst thing that happens is it doesn't smell good. And then you just go ahead, get your fractionated oil or some unscented hand lotion and try to, uh, try to dilute out what you've put on and then start over. And ditto for your diffuser, dump it out and start over if you don't like it. So we've talked about habits. You, you often hear practice makes perfect. I don't know if I like that. I prefer practice makes progress. We're just trying to implement healthy habits. You don't need to be an expert. You just need to use your oils. You know, sniff them. Note how they affect your mood. I have here, I have a, a properties, negative and positive emotional properties for every single oil. All I can say is I could offer you a few favorites, but those are just my favorites. I really love adaptive. I love balance. I like my tree oils. You might love flower oils or citrus oils more. Reach for the ones that you like. Doesn't matter. If I think peace is fantastic and you think it's revolting, you're not going to use it. But if you don't know and you reach out to one of us or you ask in the groups, you'll get myriad of answers. It's because there's no right or wrong answer. Okay, it, it's for, it's like a, a movable feast. It's a buffet. You take what you want and you leave the rest. And I, I really, I enjoy that about, about essential oils. I do want to share with you one more thing though, since I have it here. Linen sprays. We have two of them in the holiday gift guide this year. There's an adaptive one that I can't wait to get. And I have the Serenity one, which I have been using. I've even made my own over the years. This one I made for my pets just to chill them out during long car rides and for their beds. It is serenity, balance, and adaptive. I took it back. I like it better. So they like it, they're fine. But I, this morning, sprayed my cardigan. So I am much calmer now than I was an hour ago. And I have to tell you, I was really nervous before this class. I didn't sleep well last night, even though I slept like a baby the night before. I should tell you a little bit about my own journey and why I consider myself to be a little more expert. Nobody's an expert, but a little more expert than some. And that is that when I came to doTERRA, I was a chronic cyclical insomniac. 
years of nutrient deficiencies due to eating disorders, lots of mood issues, lots of emotions that were stuffed down and unchecked. Uh, very few coping, coping mechanisms. Uh, when I, I think they were manifesting along with horrendous gut health in many, many sleepless nights. So I would go for one or two weeks at a time getting anywhere from two to four or five hours of sleep a night, very often one or two hours. And I was very, very strung out. My skin looked bad, my hair was bad, my memory was poor, I was foggy. My emotions were like on the uh, endless roller coaster. And when I started using essential oils, my first big wow moment was putting some balance together and adding a little bit of vetiver, which we mentioned is a really earthy grounding oil and restored my sleep. And I did it night after night. And I broke that cycle for the first time in years. And although I don't have perfect sleeping habits now, I can honestly look you in the eye now and say that most nights, last night accepted, because <laughs> I was nervous, um, most nights I average about eight hours of sleep and I never ever thought I would see that day. And even though I'm five years older than when I started with doTERRA, I actually look five years younger than I did when I started with doTERRA. And I think that is just a function of better nutrition, better self-care, oiling, right? We think about our foundations, right? So we have our, our base, our eating right, then we have exercise, sleep and self-care, you know, proactive care and then reactive care. And I used to see the doctor all the time. Now I go only when I need checkups. So I'm leaving it at that. I'd like to open it up to questions. It's 1038, that gives us lots of time to chat. And maybe now is a time that I could address uh, oils and blends a little bit more specifically based on something that you may wanna know for yourself. So I hope you found some value in all these tips. There's quite a lot of them. Granted, you may need to watch the replay and make a few notes for yourselves if you were inspired. Thank you. Any questions? That was great. Oh. <laughs> um, a lot I, of have, I have a few questions for you here. Awesome. Um, if anybody who is here with us on Zoom, if you have a question, you can just type in the chat or unmute yourself. But uh, let's start with First of all, I was curious, your linen spray, the Serenity Balance Adaptive, what's your base? Is it just water? Um, for this particular one, I think it was, it's been a while, I made it in the summer. I think it was witch hazel and, and distilled water. And what I've found is that when I use all witch hazel, it has a bit of an aroma that I, I can't kind of get past, which is why I've, I've gone to mixing. I'd love to try perfumers alcohol, but I don't have any. That's a bit, you know bit fiddly for me. So yeah, that's what went in there. And I believe it was 10 drops of serenity, 10 drops of adaptive. No, there's no five serenity, five adaptive, and then 10 or 15 balance, because I find balance like the most subtle of the three. And that it was intended for my pets. So that was more than enough in there. And actually, it smells great. It smells really good. And because there's no, um, there's no oil in it other than the little bit that's in balance, I can spray it on my clothes and it doesn't even stain. So it's kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. awesome. <clears throat> okay, my next question for you here is, um, I, we understand that for everybody, the oils are different or what you use may not necessarily work for me in the same Absolutely. way. But what would you say your top three crisis oils are? Ooh. So if you're in that moment, what are you reaching for? Oh, that's interesting. Sometimes it's layering. Like I'll start one, I'll just keep going one to the next to the next, depending. Um, I'm always going to reach for balance. I'm not a daily balance girl necessarily. So I will use balance whenever needed. Um, adaptive, I like. Uh, it depends on the crisis though. Like sometimes if I'm really jittery and anxious, I actually, I feel maybe it's me and lavender, but I feel that adaptive sometimes doesn't bring it down. It, it will help me focus, but it doesn't necessarily bring it down. So I might even reach for serenity. Uh, what else? I'm, I'm a big fan of forgive. You've heard this out of me many, many times, uh, but I love tree oil. 
that works really nicely for me. I got to have, have to put a plug in for holiday peace right now. It's an unusual choice, but I've reached for that as a sleep oil and put that on my feet occasionally. Mm. I have diffused it. I find it a bit intense in the diffuser, but some people love it. So that's just, you know, a time of year. Um, what else would I use in a ton of, well, I, that blend I made for you that had balance, adaptive, and Melissa, I'm, all, I'm often going to have Melissa in anything when the word crisis is involved. Because for me, um, it has stopped mild feelings of anxiousness and panic. Not every time Amazing. though, <laughs> right? It's just, it, you gotta go with what works. That was a complicated answer. That's okay. I have a, I have a question here from Debbie. Do you have yeah, any suggestions for bad dreams? Yeah, so, and actually I have to thank Natalie on this one because I asked her a similar question not too long ago uh, because certain blends give me bad dreams and somebody else was asking me. And so some good options there um, would be anything combined with juniper berry. That's that one specifically. And I, I like to pair with that um, because it's it's an interesting oil. I, I kind of like it. I think it pairs really well with citrus. And well, florals, but only if you like florals. So if you don't like florals, that's when I bring in oils like marjoram and whatever. But you know, in that sleep blend that I made that had ylang ylang and marjoram and wild orange, a lot of those oils are in both serenity and peace. So I didn't make this up. Those go together so nicely. And the juniper was in there for bad dreams specifically. Oh, I'm so distracted by the cuteness of this Sorry. puppy. No, no, it's okay. It's he, was, he was crying downstairs. Uh, That's okay, a coping Michelle, mechanism. <laughs> Michelle was just asking, you mentioned yeah. Serenity soft gels. What was the other soft gel you mentioned? Copaiba. Those two, I think, work better together, at least in my personal experience. So I used to take two Serenity soft gels at night to help me with sleep. And then I dropped back to one Serenity and one Copaiba after some suggestions were made about that at our various conventions and, and um, interim you know, regional events. And that was a real winner. I actually haven't needed it. So I do take the Copaiba every night, but I'm not currently taking the Serenity soft gels. But some people do take adaptive liquid capsules at night. And I would think it's going to be an either or serenity or adaptive. Some people may find need to use both. I, I wouldn't necessarily assume that, but I think Copaiba goes well with everything. <laughs> That's just my feeling on that. And some people find their lifelong vitality a little bit energizing. So that may, that may affect when you need to take it during the day. I take mine after dinner because I don't feel, feel that affects me that way but some people will take breakfast and lunch dosing or earlier in the day because they don't want to be energized in the evening that's going to be just personal experience for you for sure okay I have one more question here uh, for somebody who's just starting to work on gut health what would you say your top three products are to or your top three tips to get started to get somebody started okay well there will be different schools of thought on this one. But uh, I think for, for quick action, Zengest or Digest Zen, the oil blend, used topically or even internally, or both, amazing. Um, Terrazon Digestive Enzymes, that is where I would start. Even before probably any of the other supplements, I would just start to ease into that, depending on how severe you know, your gut issue is. And some people have even reactions to, to a fraction of a capsule. You know, work your way in. Just because I might take a few at a heavy meal doesn't mean you need a few at a heavy meal. That was based on the damage I did to my gut. So what did I say there? Digest and Resengest, another Digest and product, which is Terrazyme. And then if, you, if you're at a point where you can take more capsules internally. I really like the Digest Zen soft gels and the peppermint enteric coated soft gels. Those were game changer for me. So enteric coating helps much like in our probiotics, 
keep that intact into the intestines so you don't have a stomach full of peppermint. It's working its way uh, through your intestines and is helping to promote regularity. And I wasn't a regular person until I started using those daily. I'm not saying you use them daily, but I do use them daily. And uh, yeah, I, I'm really hoping that, that the long-term benefits of that for me as somebody with a, a family history of um, polyps and I have a grandfather who, who had colon cancer, I'm hoping that's never come in my way because I have, uh, you know, the works are clean. <laughs> you know, things are moving. Yeah, so there you go. That's how I would start personally. And then lifelong vitality. But don't try it all on day one, like I did. Big mistake. <laughs> Everything just shut, shut right down because I wasn't well hydrated enough to tolerate all of that. Mm -hmm. Integrate slowly, baby steps. Okay, so on that note, mm -hmm. Jocelyn just wrote, my grandmother cannot take anything internally for digestive health. She gave me back Terozyme and PB Assist, could not take one capsule. Any external suggestions? Yeah, I would. then I would just start with Zenjazz. And if for any reason she can't tolerate that, she hates the smell sometimes, especially with elderly people, they're very sensitive to, uh, and, and you may find you're more sensitive or less, particularly if your digestive health is poor, right? You may react to things differently. Yeah, so very sensitive to smell. Then I might go with single oils. Anytime someone's super sensitive, start with peppermint, start with lemon, start with ginger if she likes it. She may, she may not. Maybe, you know, the, the combination of, of really interesting digestive herbs in Zenjas just doesn't evoke a good memory for her. You know, I, I kind of like the smell. I'm a black licorice girl though. Some people really can't stand it and plug their nose and, <laughs> and use it. Or it could go on her feet. That's another option, especially with elderly or young people. It's such a safe place and dilute there too, even. I mean, I think it's better not to because you want it to run through the whole body, but if somebody's sensitive or they're having strong reactions, dilute, absolutely dilute, slow it down. Yeah, feet, yes. <laughs> it's so funny how we know things and it's like until somebody reminds us, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I still do it five and a half years. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts, awesome. questions, comments? Um, I can talk emotional blends all day and all night. One of the reasons I, I strayed from the PowerPoint is because I felt two things. One, it focused really heavily on some blends and not others, and I felt like it wasn't there. <laughs> and then partially because there's too many blends. And by the time we talk through that list, you don't know up from down. Just because I love cedarwood doesn't mean you love cedarwood. But I'll tell you, if you don't like flowers and you do like balance, balance and a citrus oil, I think is maybe an alternative to serenity or even adaptive. If for some reason something in adaptive doesn't appeal to you. I have met a few people that don't like it. <laughs> Not many. I love it. Any other thoughts, questions? If not, we can end. Uh, Facebook is is good. Um, they're quiet there. So if nobody else here has anything to ask. I'm glad there are questions about digestive health, though. And that's kind of why I started with it. I could have dropped it in at any point. But it goes to foundations of, of wellness. And, you know, I, I am definitely prone to emotional ups and downs and still am. But I'm managing them entirely naturally which I'm grateful for because pharmaceutical mix. I don't know where I'd be without oils and supplements. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's yeah. a really great yeah. uh, note to leave it on. Yeah. On that so note, thank you. thank you. I hope yeah. you found value in, in any or all of this and don't hesitate to ask questions. I will put the recipes of anything I've talked about today in, underneath the live stream in the comments. So look for those. Awesome. Thank you so much, Joanna. Anytime. <laughs> See you all again soon. Okay. Thanks, so everyone. we are done the live stream. Thank you everybody Thanks. who is here with us this morning for joining us on Zoom. It's always nice to see your faces and your names. And we will see you next week for Women's Health.
Ooh, thank you. That was great. Awesome. Thanks, Joanna. That was really good. Thanks, Joanna. Thank, thank you so you. much for saying that. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. <laughs> now,